Greetings, I'm Roger Newbold, and welcome to episode 25 of Experienced Photography. Now, my fellow photographer, my partner, my friend, our editor for this episode is Matt Rich. He's the man full of astounding talent, and I'm proud that he keeps this giant dirigible afloat. Are you there, my little creative buddy? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Good. In episode 24, we talked about making great uh, strides in breaking free from the binding atmosphere of inflexibility. We want to overcome all of the blockages to creative seeing and action. So fasten your seatbelt. We're going in for part two today. Now, the next step is refilling the creative well inside of us. This does not necessarily insist that we remain within the same discipline or even media. In a fallow period, I came upon a small paperback book on writing poetry. And so, <laughs> you know me, out of the pan, into the fire. It uh, rearranged my thinking and changed a lot of, about my outlook on many different things. And it also left me with a very fine verse about my Siamese cat. It doesn't all have to rhyme or fit into a box of just 64 colored crayons. You can color outside the line if you need to, and you may just smile. Refill by reading. Check out something new. Learn how to view a problem from a different angle. One of the books that I found was really thought-provoking, and I'd heard a lot about it. It's by Malcolm Gladwell. It's called Outliers. In Outliers, he puts forth an idea about conventional wisdom, good health, good behavior, and perhaps, and most importantly, the 10,000-hour rule. Now, this rule theorizes that achievement is coupled directly to greater preparation. Then Gladwell supports multiple examples of other people's and their accomplishments. Darn, you know, even that Ansel Adams guy states that a photographer maybe will have a good grasp on the medium by the time they've made their first 10,000 negatives. That indicates that we better get a good grasp on something deeply is this magic or is it just best advice? I read that Steven Spielberg generated many of his good ideas on just going out and going for a drive by himself. <laughs> Can't hurt. You know, Jamie Oliver reformatted his whole life by learning to cook. And now look at him. TV programs, book after book, pretty successful. Georgia O'Keeffe, the famous painter, she exclaimed that flowers were so absolutely beautiful, but you couldn't appreciate their tiny little size. So she made pictures of flowers that were giants. A good friend of mine, Dan Hendrickson, he's an excellent photographer, but for a creative boost, <laughs> He began, began baking specialty breads and pastries. And now, what a treat to go see his prints. Good prints, good bread. I hope you're feeling better, Dan, and you're getting back on your feet. Some receive odd cosmic rays while... <laughs> to simply taking a shower. Who knew? People get blocked up. They have problems. They're unhappy. 
but they refuse to follow the steps to freedom. They explain, <laughs> they exclaim, and I've, I've heard this many times, eh, if I stop and take all of these actions, do you know how old I'll be? <laughs> Why, yes, I do. You'll be the same damn age and still blocked and unhappy. Don't argue. Don't casually dismiss these recommendations. P.S. Don't kill a messenger. <laughs> I'm on your side. I'm one of the good guys. I've got I do have a white hat. I just want your struggle to be shorter and less complicated than mine. Try looking at life with a lot more humor. Now, what do John the Baptist and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Think about it. Why, it's their middle name. Come on. I know you want to groan. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson were out camping on the moor. And in the middle of the night, Holmes wakes up Watson. <coughs> asks, hey, look up. What do you see? And Watson replies, why, it's a beautiful sky. Wonderful stars. A waxing moon. No, you daft man. Somebody stole our tent. You know, you've got to look at it with some humor. Life is just too short to be ground out. Half of our problems are self-generated. You know, twist that attitude around. As DeWitt Jones said, turn around, DeWitt. See what's behind you. Take a picture of what's behind you. Take a picture of whatever's going on. Bust out with a photo that's really off the wall. Don't develop tunnel vision. Oh, I set off to photograph mushrooms today and I can't take another picture other than a mushroom. Don't be a mushroom. Get out and do, see. Use some humor. You know, if you use humor, you'd take pictures uh, like this one called the old outhouse. <laughs> you know, I saw it. It was great. There are hidden benefits in humor, especially when conjoined with uh, all of the humdrum that life gives us. Playful elements lead to better creative thinking. You know, you can write a to-do list or you can write a super villains things that must get done list. Now tell me, which one is more memorable and more fun to accomplish? If super villains aren't your thing, hmm. How about the world's greatest photographer list? Yeah, now there's one for you. When you transport to another dimension, you begin thinking with a new array of patterns and thoughts and ideas. Divergent thinking allows us to drift into an uncharted cosmos. That new perspective may be just the free-flowing thing, the spontaneous, non-linear jolt that you need. If you've never worked inside, now's your time to try it. It's cold outside. Here it's snowing. You know, work inside. You're going to learn something about lighting. When was the last time you photographed something out of your comfort range? Well, don't like that? Try street photography. Generally, generally, people don't bite. <laughs> and you'll learn to fight your own fears. Creative people are particularly good at exercising flexibility and activating and deactivating these little 
brain networks that most people tend to be at odds with. Be at ease in seeing and doing new things. You might find an alien out there, or you could have trouble with tribbles. Yeah, you don't want trouble. Well, maybe, I don't know. Adapt, overcome. Playfulness generates more curiosity. And I will tell you right now, there is no cure for curiosity. It brings on a quicker wit, a non-threatening environment. It boasts abilities in creative problem solving. It may even help you put up with <laughs> my weird hat collection. Certainly, it will enhance the level of creativity, fluency, and vocabulary. So many of us interact more fluidly if we are thinking and happy and creative. Maybe they should bring back recess. I'm voting for it. I found a small notebook that I carry with me in my pocket and one in my truck are central and idea collecting. You see something you can't stop and shoot right now? Jot it down. Write the location, date, time, so that you can return. I have, I have at least 20 of these. Now, Ruth Bernhard, her classic photograph of the crystal doorknob is a fine example. When I was talking with Ruth, she was telling me that she didn't have time to make an image when she spotted that reflection and as it occurred the day that it happened. Now, she came back the next day. By darn, the reflection did not materialize. The light wasn't right. She had to write it down on her calendar. She came back one year later and the light was right, it hit, it appeared, she photographed it. Write it down. I'm not pushing any particular product, but the little three by five inch paperback moleskin notebooks are extremely small and allow notes and sketches to be made. I'll have Matt put up a picture of a moleskin there. You know, I, I've got them. I, I dedicate one to a small book and I'll write down all my notes that uh, as I'm reading, any quotes, anything special, anything that stands out to me, and I'll label that little book and I'll stick it away. And when I'm looking for inspiration, I can just flip through these. They are wonderful. Besides that, nobody is perfect. <laughs> you may not remember. Okay, I'm old. But write down any idea, any thoughts for a new project, a photographer of note that you find. This is all good advice. And it's another point to help you get out of the creative doldrums. You flip through these, see somebody else's work, some other idea, something that triggers you to jump. Another good point is that these little books will help you keep a list of all your PhDs. It's a good thing moleskins come in a pack of two. Mm, by the way, PhDs are projects half done. <laughs> if the project was good enough to get started, it's good enough to finish. Is this something you began? You know, things change, tools change, experience changes. Your new creative values will change. Your to-do list will change. Your day pages will help you see new things. Look for ways to be different, to be better. This will haul you out of the doldrums. Spice up your editing techniques. A class on Photoshop or a quick book on the subject 
will intensify your thoughts and techniques. Even if you read a book and find one new keystroke shortcut that saves you time and effort, boy, the book will be worth it. So jalapeno up your image finishing, you know, as well as uh, you can. Do the best pictures. They don't just splatter out of the bottom of the camera. You're going to have to work on them to get them to look that way. Find out how to do it. Spice up your work. Follow photographers who inspire you. Now, beware of that advice. It's a double-edged sword. You can absorb new ideas and new techniques with good results. But I tested out the possibility of becoming the next Ansel Adams. And it didn't work. It may set you back uh, or, or even totally disillusion you. But there is some good advice in this. In following others, you uh, may try something different. You'll keep your work vigorous. And I'll have a lot more of this to say uh, about this in episode 27. Take a peek at the following. Here's a page by Dwayne Michaels. He changed his style from one thing to another. Robert Farber, been a, a friend and associate when I was very new to photography. His fashion work just knocked me out. And now he's traveled into a new area to give him more impetus and more creative outlook in his Western work. I love it. Sheila Metzner, another fashion icon of the of New York. Boy, I mean, her work was great. I loved it. Books of hers I, I, I tend to take a lot of time with. But when she came to Utah during the 2002 Olympics, Look at some of the things she created in the landscape. Oh, she got talent. There is no reason not to explore. There may become, they become the, the what am I saying, the bumper jack that gets you out of a pothole. They increase your awareness of incredible light. This past week, I had an interesting conversation with my friend Ken. He mentioned the quixotic spirited light that provided the incentive for him to get out and make new images. In one of our meetings, Howard, another friend, shared a photo from his phone that he caught on his ride to work. This swiftly migrating light has always been a beacon and an excuse, the pun, but it's a shining example of a visual artist throughout time. They take time to look at these examples. Look at Turner's page. Look at his paintings. Look at the light. My goodness gracious. Now look at Maynard Dixon's page. My wife and I often comment as we're driving along and we see these great clouds with flat bottoms on. Oh, Maynard Dixon should have been here today. I love his work. De Browner, his page. You know, he, he does all kinds of great landscape, but for some excitement, eh, and tell me a tornado coming right at you isn't excitement. He got out there and did a whole bunch of new stuff. Made a new book. Wow. Now, this is a rather personal question. Do you have gas? I mean, gear acquisition syndrome. Obtaining new equipment is the ultimate double-edged sword. Maybe it is helpful. Maybe I wouldn't rest the rest of my career on uh, buying a new filter or a new artificial style or 
some gadget that came in the Tinkerbell filter category or something from Square Bob Sponge Pants at Lenswork or, I mean, Lens Baby. You know, you really must be honest with yourself where new gear is concerned. Ask yourself, will it really advance my, my career? Will it really make a difference? Do I really need it? If you own more stuff than you can carry, think it out again. Best advice is to rent, test it out, sneaking another box emblemized with uh, the B&H <laughs> logo through the back door and hiding it in the closet uh, may not add to your marital bliss or a smiley face at MasterCard office. <laughs> the idea is to have fun making pictures, not worrying, stewing, and sitting in a big slump. I'm just giving you a word to the wise. Don't, don't get in financial trouble by doing that. We've now discovered there is no one way, or maybe not even a right way to make photographs. The only thing that could possibly wrong is not doing anything at all. Being bound up and unhappy sometimes shows up. And concentrating on images that make you happy, they're going to set you free. They're going to spark creativity. They're going to get you out of the doldrums. They're going to bring you joy. Being an artist is about living deliberately and full of passion. Placing curiosity and awe at the top of your list and discovering joy. Man, that's important. My friends, our time is up for today. I sincerely hope that Matt and I have given you some new steps to climb out of that discouraging rut and hole. I hope you will share this with your friends. Help them. Help yourself. So subscribe to our channel and by all means Give us that big thumbs up. Please remember to keep going one step at a time. It's not over till you're dead. Hey, I'm not even sure about that. A tip of my hat to you, my friends. Until we meet again on screen, cheerio.